Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Permission marketing versus interruption marketing. Now, you must know as a coach or consultant that the goal is to gain more clients every time and to introduce ourselves to people that have never heard of us so that they get to know, like, and trust us and eventually do business with us. But how are we going to get these unknowns or people that are not yet um, you know, introduced to us to get to know us without either interrupting their pattern of their day or seeking their permission. Now, you might not be seeing this as this is a podcast, but in my hands, I have the marketing classic book by Seth Gordon called Permission Marketing. And I just finished reading this book and it, it really resonates to where we are as coaches, consultants, and small business owners. Because whether it is the television ad that breaks into your maybe favorite program or telemarketing phone call that disrupts you when you're having your family dinner, traditional advertising is really based on the hope of snatching your attention away from whatever you're doing. And um, I think Seth Gordon really, really calls this interruption marketing. And a few people are now starting to discover that it no longer works. So instead of annoying your potential clients by interrupting their um, you know, day with whatever widget or trinket that you're selling, it is now time for us to seek permission from our prospects okay so we're actually giving them um incentives gifts or um you know ways for them to actually start accepting advertising from us the same way this podcast is not interrupting your day you literally chose a time to listen to this podcast either you received an email yesterday and now today you found time while you're at the gym or you're walking and you decided wait a minute let me uh listen to this podcast and find out what interruption marketing is all about so we're no longer spraying and praying and hoping that people get our message no we're actually um, you know, reaching out to people, asking them to exchange their email address for valuable content, and then we can actually continue uh, their bias journey with us. I hope that's what you're doing with your marketing. And if you haven't, then this is the podcast for you to listen so that you can actually start relating um, and creating for an audience that is actually captivated instead of just spraying and praying and hoping that people are receiving your message out there. So if you're just uh, tuning into our podcast, then obviously this one is a big one because we're going to be talking about what permission marketing is and how you can actually understand how to implement this. And towards the end of the podcast, I'm going to be giving you exact action steps that you could actually start implementing today in order for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, the question might be arising and you're asking yourself, what is permission marketing? And for you to actually understand permission marketing, you need to understand what its opposite is, which is interruption marketing. A bit right now in your inbox, you've received 500 emails since morning from somebody wanting to do your SEO. You've received a phone call from somebody who claims to be from Google or from Amazon saying that your package that you never ordered is about to be delivered. So you need them to, they need you to give them their, your credit card details, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is interruption 
marketing. It used to work before when in the household, there was one television, one radio station, and one telephone. So everyone was listening to the same message. Everyone was listening to the same, um, you know, uh, fashion and following the same trends. But now that we are living in such a diverse community where there's so many niches within niches within niches, your message really has to be targeted to an identified target market. And you need to clarify that message so that the right people with the right kind of pain would listen to you instead of you spraying and praying um, basically to just about anybody else who has who has ears and, and uh, you know, eyes to see your content. So, like we said, we need to understand what the opposite of permission marketing is, which is interruption marketing. Now, I'll try and explain in my own version of how I understand it, but you already know uh, what it is we're talking about here. Because interruption marketing is happening every day. The moment you open your radio, the moment you open your TV, somebody is trying to sneak in and add and hoping that you will at least um, follow whatever call to action they've given you on there, which doesn't work these days. And I'm wondering why a lot of people continuously spend money on antiquated marketing methods, but maybe they're working because people wouldn't do something that is not paying them, right? So interruption marketing is advertising in the traditional way, okay? And the internet has made, um, you know, this interruption marketing worse with more clutter than in the old days when advertising was primarily just limited to uh, the radio or the newspaper and select ne uh, TV sort of networks. And these days, permission marketing, in contrast, uses a strategy to actually you get the prospects to provide you with various levels of permission to market to them and making them far more receptive to your message, all right? The people that receive our podcast are people that are in our email list. Either you're just getting to know of us and we're going to invite you to uh, download a report or some sort of valuable component in order for us to have your details so that we can continuously um, communicate with you in the hopes that you are looking to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if that's not your thing, obviously you could always unsubscribe and there's no animosity that is generated um, simply because, you know, somebody is trying, um, you know, to force down a message that is not received by the other party. So for you to combat this and kick out, um, this clatter and the noise and the interruption that is out there um, in the marketplace, you really need to uh, stand out with value. And to combat and stick out in a clutter of me too coaches and consultants out there that is saturated by, um, you know, mediocre people, you really need to keep your message fresh and in, you need to gain your prospects' attention and um, they need to offer you the permission to actually reach out to them. And let me tell you something. This is expensive. And, um, you know, it, 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 if you're just spraying and praying with your marketing, it's very expensive. And it achieves poor response rates, especially today uh, where people have a choice to either skip an ad or to actually block you from their news, news feed. Okay, but however, if you're using permission marketing, um, permission now becomes an asset. All right, it is less about new customer acquisition and more about selling more of whatever you already have to the same customer. So instead of market share, we're actually now going for wallet share. How many products can you actually sell to the same person in order for them to, um, uh, keep buying from you, which makes acquisition much, much more cheaper because when when you pay um, to reach out to the per, uh, a, a customer and they give you permission, you can now keep selling uh, products and services to them as long as they are aligned to their goals and what it is that they want to achieve, okay? So it is the difference between maybe the reach, which happens to be the number of potential clients that you can reach uh, with a campaign and 
frequency, which is the number of times you touch each person with your message. Okay. And I think I saw a great definition of sales versus marketing um, that can help make this concept actually reach, um, you know, you know, the concept of reach and frequency much clearer. Okay. So marketing is an effort defined by businesses to communicate with the masses okay whatever efforts that you choose your social media um podcasts like this that you have defined th that is the best way to communicate your message to the masses that is marketing all right so marketing is a one-to-many sort of approach and where um interruption marketing is often used to create brand awareness people are interrupting people um, you know their prospects in the news feed just so that they get to know them all right but there's no like and trust involved in interrupting people um in their day-to-day -day life and sales by contrast is when a sales rep from a company is communicating with the prospect and it's usually typically face to face okay some people sell one to many through web uh, webinars um you know or events but sales are more of a one to one approach and where the permission marketing is is used to drive the pros uh, the prospect through what we call a value ladder and i was speaking about that um as we go along in this podcast so so normally interruption marketing is generally associated with um either a coach or consultant whose whose marketing efforts are trying to just reach out to as many people as possible while sales is generally associated with permission marketing because you can't sell to somebody who has not been enrolled to uh, your message as yet okay so you want to be taking a really good sales approach because only people that you have booked an appointment with and people that have accepted for you to sit down with them and tell them more about your product that is where permission starts okay so at the core of permission marketing is the fact that you have to invest a lot of time and energy on a few prospects um, as compared to interruption marketing which is just spraying and praying okay and with interruption marketing you're just casting a wider you know but uh, a net with uh, with with a lot of holes in it and and often you're failing to achieve the level of contact that is needed for you to actually make the sale all right you're just interrupting people uh hoping that you are reaching people but hey people don't re uh, respond to marketing that isn't directed at them and one way you can try and visualize this concept is let me give you a couple of examples all right so suppose you're a farmer all right let's say you're a farmer or you you've got a green thumb and you've got a hundred seeds and a hundred daily doses of water now would you take your hundred seeds and water each of them once and hope that they will survive or would you take at least three of your best seeds throw away the rest and then water each of these three seeds um maybe every day for a month you know which option would you choose because interrupting in, interruption marketing is about reach so more seeds and less water while permission marketing is about frequency which is less seeds and more watering all right because when you have been given permission then you know the person is a quality lead that you would definitely need to nurture okay or i can try another example which is probably close to home where if interruption marketing was like dating let's say you know because that's an easy example it would spend loads of money on a new suit and find a bar with um, a lot of people that represent the demographics uh, for their future, you know, spouse or partner that they're trying to woo on that date. And it will walk up to each prospective pr um, spouse, introduce itself and deliver a marriage proposal. Whereas permission marketing would, would be more like traditional dating. It would show up, find the best prospect in the bar, focus his attention on this single prospect all night and then suggest a second date and end the evening who do you think will be much more uh, successful in in finding a, a spouse that wants to marry them so in permission marketing you use 
bait or something of value, which we call a lead magnet that you give away in exchange to begin the permission marketing process to build a reputation that obviously builds levels of trust. So you ultimately, uh, the prospect will buy from you or whatever it is that you've recommended because people do not buy until a level of trust has been achieved. And after you've had their permission and after you've had earned their trust, you can now start moving, um, you know, your marketing to sales. So a lot of people come to me and they're always complaining that they can't get clients. Um, they're finding it difficult to actually get their clients is because they think whatever they're doing on social media or whatever they're doing on Google, uh, which is spraying and praying is actually going to help them get clients. Have you got permission from the people that you're trying to reach out to in order for you to be actually selling to them? Okay. So getting a prospect's permission and moving them up the permission marketing scale is all about building trust. Because like we said, people buy from those that they know, like, and trust. So we, when you're conducting permission marketing, permission is always granted in one form or another. And as I mentioned earlier on, um, you know, in, about Seth Gordon in his book, he is saying you're turning strangers into friends and then friends into customers, right? So there's always five levels of this sort of permission that the customer can grant and each increases your business chances of actually lending that person into, um, you know, a client that will pay, stay and refer. So you're probably just sitting there and thinking, how am I going to be able to get this permission from these clients? Um, I'm going to lay out for you just five simple uh, strategies that you need to start implementing in your business right now. The first one is what we call situational marketing. All right. So situational marketing um, is basically it requires that the contact is first initiated by the customer. Okay. And once the customer makes this first contact, situational marketing can now, okay. Now situational marketing, you know, that's the lowest level of our permission marketing um, ladder that we're going to be talking about. So when somebody comes to McDonald's and then they're looking for, say, just a small meal and the person at McDonald's asks them, do you want fries with that? That's an example of situational marketing. Somebody has walked into your shop and you just so happen to have something uh, that they might need and they didn't know it when they walked in. All right. So you, when you start doing situational marketing, you know, it, it, it is actually designed around the specific circumstances and the needs of that individual customer. Most of the time, our customers don't quite know what it is that they want. They don't quite know what it is that is lacking. But us as experts, we already know their needs before they ask. All right. So let's give an example that you called your digital marketer or somebody who is um, a service provider to you and you wanted them to uh, put your service on hold because it's about to be Christmas or it's about to be uh, some sort of a holiday and you wanted to go on vacation. During a situational marketing call, the person on the other end might report, re reply to you and say, yeah, sure, we could do that. And seeing that you're a good customer, would you like to upgrade your monthly billing, which involves us charging your credit card um you know, instead of you having to uh, call us. So whenever we charge your credit card, you can actually just stop your credit card and then we don't bill. And the person will be like, oh, okay, that will be great. So in situational marketing, once the customer makes contact, the business takes the liberty to upsell. So what is it within your business um, do you have that when somebody walks in, you can ask them, would you like fries with that? It's like when somebody comes to a business and maybe they're looking for just a website, we could actually start offering them an SEO service or social media marketing or things like that. All right. What have you got that when you ask your customer, hey, would you want an upgrade or would you like um, a warranty on this product? And then they'll say yes. That's the yes that you've gotten that will give you permission in the future for you to actually sell them more things. All right. And 
once that is in play now, if somebody has already paid you some money and it's gone through and they're happy with the product, they start developing trust, okay? Now, this sort of permission is very expensive to obtain trust. Even in our relationships, you once you lose it, you've lost it forever. But once you've established it, it provides you with the opportunity to actually charge a premium for your product or service. You know why? Because these people are already trusting you. So your brand trust sort of reflects the customer's expectation of what your brand's product or service and maybe custom, you know, business behavior. It actually matches, um, you know, whatever promises that you made. Okay. So if you leave up to your promises and you deliver on you know, your promises and whatever customer expectations, you start creating that brand trust. And I think there's places like Starbucks, and I think it's a really good example of brand trust because they sought out to create what they call a third place, okay? And now it's considered a premium brand worthy of a high price tag for a cup of coffee. Because can you imagine paying five, six, seven, eight dollars for just a cup of coffee that you can pay, which costs them a dollar or less to manufacture? So brand trust is often the sort of desired level of permission marketing because no matter what you're going to uh, present to your customer, your customer is not going to question it because they already trust your brand. But however, Brand trust can be lost with a single misstep. So, you know, there's bigger companies like Coca-Cola. They nearly lost all its brand trust overnight when it introduced a new Coke formula. And they quickly went back to the tried and trusted, um, you know, uh, method of creating their their, um, Coca-Cola. And once the customer trusts you as a business, you start formulating a personal relationship. And this is why it's very crucial for you to be building both a personal brand and a company brand. Because when you now have a personal relationship with somebody, you get permission on another level. You see, this kind of permission is where permission is granted to a person to actually call them based on personal trust. Or people would accept your recommendations just simply because they trust you as a person. And when it comes to places like beauty salons or consultants, permission is often just granted to to the consultant or the, the hairdresser and not on the saloon itself. People seek out an individual to actually help them. Um, you know, make sense of the world around them. And the permission resides in the individual and not, and and if, if, if you as a consultant, maybe leave where you're working or you start doing other things, um, your customers do not automatically stay with your business or do not uh, automatically um, patronize your, your, your solutions. All right. You know, I have trusted relationship with my auto mechanic, And when he says, I need to make a repair, I often say, yep, you're the expert, make it happen. I know that he's not trying to squeeze out the last dollars out of my pocket. So an issue with personal relationship uh, permissions is that they are not, however, scalable and they have no resale value um, since people are sort of free agents if they decide to move. So make sure, you know, if you're a consultant, and you are having, um, you know, uh, other consultants work under you or something of that nature, make sure you systemize the process so that the whole business is represented as a person and your clients can actually start having a personal relationship with your business, all right? Because if, 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 if the person goes away from your business, then maybe the trust is gone or... Uh, people actually move away with with your hard-earned work, okay? So, as I promised you earlier, I'm going to give you instances of how to actually start implementing this permission marketing, all right? Because it is a process. It's not a one-time fix thing, you know? It will not operate. You will not just turn it on today and you get immediate results, okay? So, it is sort of like a flywheel that starts slow and then it does build momentum over time. But you got to have permission to actually market to the people that you're going to be marketing to. So like I said, you know, you 
you got to make sure that you start implementing this. All right. Now, you can walk before you run. Okay. And I want you to make sure that you figure out the lifetime value of a new customer. Now, without this information, it will be very difficult for you to compute um, what it's worth for you to acquire new permission. If you know how much it's going to cost you to acquire a new customer and you know how much a customer is worth to you, you would then actually go all out to create this um, new customer. So some consultants, you know, when you are working uh, with, with a, you know, with a company, you can actually be paid hundreds and thousands of dollars. Wouldn't it be worth maybe sacrificing 10% of that in, to actually lure that customer, knowing that you will be uh, gainfully paid uh, later on in your endeavor and the journey with your customer? And once you've done this, invent and build a series of communication suits that you will start turning your strangers into friends. Now, this could be a series of emails, a series of letters, a, silly, a series of uh, scripts that you use on the phone for your conversations, a series of web pages, and so on. These are essential in order for you to do these four things, right? Um, you know, they must actually uh, drive leads towards a place where you can subscribe them. And you should harvest these leads and then convert them into happy clients that pay, stay, and refer, okay? And all of this should be done with enough automation that is independent of you as a consultant. And it has to be systemized in a way that it's predictable and you can actually guarantee the results that you're getting. And if you need help um, in order for you to implement this, why don't you schedule a call with me so that we can actually help you start getting a lot more permission out there in order for you to be doing have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And once you have all of these elements to, to um, you know, uh, together, they must actually take place over time because it does take time to create these relationships. And they must offer, uh, you know, the customer a selfish reason to respond, okay? And these responses should alter the communication moving forward and change the message as you learn more about this customer. That's why you need to have a well-defined customer journey so that your customers are actually following a logical next step. Because if your customers don't see where they're going or what's in it for them, then guess what? Grand opening, grand closing, and all that money that you would have spent acquiring or trying to get this um, you know, permission is all going to be uh, wasted. All right. And finally, there should be a final call to action that you can measure these results because there's no point in you putting out content, putting out all this information, trying to get all this permission, yet you can't even measure any of your efforts because in marketing, what doesn't get measured cannot be repeated. You know what I mean? Or you can't get results from it. Okay. And once you've gotten all these pieces together, you want to change all your advertising to include a call to action. Never run an ad of any kind that doesn't give customers a chance to respond. And once they respond, initiate one um, of these communication suits in order for you to actually start the journey with them. Okay. Uh, write them an email or send them a podcast just so that they get to know you, like you and trust you immediately. And then you continuously um, ask for more permission to send them more marketing materials and, and measure everything, measure the results of each um, communication suit that you're putting out there, all right? Throw out the bottom 60% and replace them with new suits and continue testing uh, all these approaches because sometimes you might think that you are, um, you know, exciting your audience, yet they are actually ignoring your message, okay? And try and see how many permissions you are achieving and measure how much each permission is changing the buying behavior of your uh, prospect. And once you see people sort of moving up the uh, buyer's journey, reward them, you know, uh, for, 
you know, for, for taking part in that because they could be doing that with somebody else, all right? And actually make sure that each and every person that you're dealing with has an understanding of what the journey would be, all right? And at the end of the day, leverage your permission by offering additional products or services and co-marketing with other partners who already have permission out there. Like we said, the old traditional marketing is long and forgotten. So if you're not asking for permission from your customers along the journey, you are definitely missing out on a lot of trust that you could be building you know, on your way to creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you're looking to create this and have a queue of dream clients who will climb all over each other to give you their money, I want you to schedule a call with me so that we can see where you are and actually start creating these communication suits so that you can get the permission that you need um, to get your customers to buy from you frequently, okay? I'll be able to help you grow your business into, I don't know, whatever you are right now, into way into the seven figures and beyond. And this can be done within the next two years. So you never have to call, call another client. You never have to send yet another email that gets ignored. And you never have to lie awake in bed at night wondering where your next client is going to come from. You will finally enjoy the growth of your business and financial security, which means you can actually live life on your terms now do i have permission to do this in your business you let me know thank you for joining us today if you have any questions let's continue the conversation in the live long digital community become a live long digital community member today this community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au